this time in what feels like forever, I am once again here to share with you guys my reading wrap up. So stay tuned to see what I read in the month of dis not December, as much as I wish it was. September. Month of September. <laughs> Hello everyone, it is Samantha and I hope you guys are having a fantastic day and I hope you guys had a lovely September and a lovely summer. It is finally October and it means fall which is like the beginning of my favorite time of the year because from basically September, October all the way through January, I am a happy camper. This is the time of year I live for so I am a very very excited and happy person today. But aside from all of that goodness, I am also here today to share with you guys my reading wrap up for the month of September. It has been quite a while since I've done one of these videos. So I decided it was high time I got back to it because I miss sharing with you guys what I read in the month So as always I'm going to start out with a few statistics and then get into the actual books that I read So let us begin so in the month of September I ended up reading a grand total of four books up between these four books I ended up reading a total of 1,691 pages which averages to about 55 pages a day So not my best reading month, but I tried in terms of genre 50% were fantasy, and then 25% was nonfiction, and the other 25% was YA. In terms of book type, 50% was a hardback, 25% trade paperback, and the other 25% was an arc, but it was also kind of a hardback, so I guess really it was like 75% hardback, but you know, that's why statistics are not always the most accurate thing in the world. In terms of star rating, it had a pretty good spread. One book was three and a half stars, one book was four stars, one book was four and a half stars, and the last one was five stars. So those were my statistics for the month September and now I'll get into the books and what I thought of them. So the first book that I finished in September was the nonfiction book and I actually started it in June but I pretty much didn't read any of it in July. I read part of it in August and finished the rest in September and it wasn't because I wasn't enjoying it. It was actually a pretty interesting read but I basically have had horrible reading months from basically April through August. Like it just I have not been reading very much. So I finally finished, finished it in September and I enjoyed it and that was The Middle Ages Everyday Life in Medieval Europe. So this is a nonfiction book that details the lives of people in the Middle Ages. It explores their life, every aspect of their life, the types of people you would find, their jobs, how they lived, what they did, what they wore, things like that. And it's the type of history that I find interesting. I like to read about how people used to live, not necessarily the historical events. So it was a pretty interesting read. I've read a couple of other nonfiction books that had a similar type of theme exploring the lives of everyday people, but I still learned a lot of new stuff in this one. And it was enjoyable and I found it very fascinating. The writing was also very accessible. It wasn't like a dense read. It was pretty pretty easy to understand. Sometimes nonfiction books, particularly with history, can be a bit dry, but I find this one to be still pretty entertaining and it was just a really fascinating read. I always have kind of a hard time rating nonfiction books, but I enjoy this one and I ended up giving it a four and a half out of five stars. The next book that I read in September was A Hawkweed Prophecy by Irina Brignall. I did receive this from the publisher in exchange for a free novice review, which I have already done and I'll link the video down below. But overall, I actually really ended up enjoying this book. It follows two girls whose fates are linked and one lives with the witches. She was raised to be a witch, but she never really felt like she belonged. She doesn't quite have the powers that the others do, and she basically just kind of feels like an outcast in her society. And then the other girl was raised among fellow mortals who have no magical abilities, but she too has always felt a bit like an outcast, and strange things have always occurred around her. And then one day these two girls meet, and they become friends, and they see the same things in each other, and an unlikely bond and friendship forms, and they learn more about each other and their past, and how they their fates are linked. And it was a really, really enjoyable read. It was perfect for this time of year. It's perfect fall book, perfect Halloween October book. Kind of had a creepy vibe. It's definitely the type of book that would be really fun to read with like on a rainy stormy day with a cup of tea or coffee. So it was a very enjoyable one. I enjoyed it a lot more than I thought I was going to. It also deals with some themes I think are very important, which include bullying and depression. And I just overall really enjoyed it and thought it was a very decent read. I ended up rating it four out of five stars. I gave the characters four stars. I gave the plot four stars. I gave the world building setting three and a half out of five stars because it was kind of hard to tell where the story was supposed to be taking place because it does take place in our world. And then I gave the writing itself four stars. So it was definitely an enjoyable read and one that I would recommend for the fall season. The next book that I finished in September was one of my favorite books for the month and this year and it's from one of my new favorite series and that is Saint's Blood by Sebastian de Castell, the third book in the Great Coat series. This one was so so good. It is definitely my favorite in the series now. I loved all the characters. I love where the story is going. It was kind of like a mystery and 
I just love it so much. The series itself is just really enjoyable. It's kind of like The Three Musketeers meets the Lies of Lacamora. That was how I would describe this story. It is can be very dark, but it can also be pretty humorous, and the humor is definitely my kind of humor, so I really, really enjoy it. A lot of the mystery and intrigue to be very engrossing, and the story itself, particularly in this one, was just extremely enjoyable. I cannot wait for book four. I am so excited. I love, love, love this series so much, and I highly recommend it. So if you're looking for kind of a fun fan fantasy series that has a lot of action, that it has a lot of humor, and that is just really fun and adventurous, and I definitely recommend this one because it is definitely a new favorite. The rating breakdown for this book is as follows. I gave the characters four and a half out of five stars, I gave the plot five stars, I gave the world building five stars, and I gave the writing five stars. So this was definitely an enjoyable read for me, and I kind of want to read it again. I want book four so bad. I want to be back with these characters. I just loved it so much. And the final book that I read in the month of September was Bone Queen by Alison Croggan. This is the first book of Pelinor. Alison Croggan is the author of one of my favorite series from my young teenage years, and that would be the Pelinor series. This book, however, takes place before the Pelinor series begins, so it is a prequel novel where you learn more about some of the characters that you're introduced to in the Pelinor series, specifically Cadvin, who is one of the main characters. And I enjoyed it. It wasn't as good as I was hoping it would be. I think part of that might have just been because I wasn't in the mood to read it, and I really should have stopped reading it when I realized I was in the mood for reading it. I think it's not as strong as the actual Pelinor series, which is a tendency with prequel novels, I found. But overall, it was fairly enjoyable. I would say that her writing felt a little bit different from the Pelinor series, and I don't know if it's because it's been many, many years since she finished writing the last book for the Pelinor series, so the tone was a little bit off, but it wasn't quite was that what I was expecting, but it was still a fairly enjoyable read, but it wasn't my favorite by far this month. So the rating breakdown for this book for me is as follows. I gave the characters three stars, the plot four stars, the writing three and a half stars, and the world building three and a half stars for an overall rating of three and a half stars. So it wasn't my favorite book of the month. It wasn't the worst one I've ever read, but I just, you know, I, I read better by Alison Croggan. So it was a little bit of a disappointment, but not the most disappointing book I've ever come across. All right guys, that is it for my September reading wrap up. I hope you guys enjoyed it. It's been a while since I've done one of these. I hope you guys like seeing what I read in the month of September. You'll have to let me know if you've read any of these books and what your thoughts are because I would love to know. Thank you guys so much for watching. Have a wonderful day and until next time, happy reading. Bye. So the first book that I finished said, can't talk today. Yeah, oops. I really need to pick up my reading game. I have just sucked at reading for the past like six months. So here's to hoping October, November, December will be better. Yes, it's been, I've had a busy year though, in my defense. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please feel free to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for new videos every Monday and Thursday.